still in your mind and how important are these next four games? Um, you know, looking at the schedule, I think this will be like kind of the easier time to schedule. It's a very winnable uh, four games. So it's very important. How do you... Is bowl eligibility in your mind at all, or how do you I mean, how do you yes. block that out and just focus on one game? I mean, that's the goal. I mean, that's the goal every season. So, I mean, it's been on my mind since we didn't go to bowl game last year. So that's been my goal all season. Yeah. 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 So, how, do you, how do you feel like you played? Um, yeah. Yeah. Decent. Was it nice to get? Get some, you know, more reps and get that, get a start and kind of. Oh yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was nice. It was more the reps thing. I mean, just as long as I got my reps, it doesn't really have to be starting. But it was nice to start. But just seeing my reps increase was nice. Did you feel like the adjustments that they made kind of really, I guess, uh, paid off for you guys against Florida? Um, there weren't many adjustments. Just a, a couple lineup changes, you know. Me, Ronell, and Kale, we all had pretty good games, so I guess the lineup changes paid off a little bit in that aspect. What was the mood in practice like yesterday? Um, a lot of people were sore. I mean, it's always physical when you play one of those, you know, historic SEC teams like Florida, LSU, and stuff like that. So we're sore, but everybody's ready to work. Nobody's really good playing. So is, is this are you guys just trying to you know forget that last game or kind of use this motivation? I mean, you don't really forget the game. Just get better on the things you can improve on. Um, the defense, we're just gonna build off of that. I mean, like you said, we um, like we're gonna we're not necessarily gonna forget it, but um, we only gave up what 19 points and seven of that was in the. Uh, I think third or fourth quarter when everybody was just exhausted. So we know we can play with the big boys. So we're just trying to build off of that. Marcel, seems like week to week they're kind of flip flopping all out on the end spots. Yeah. Is there, a, I mean, a specific reason for that? Um, I think they're just trying to build good habits with the players. I mean, as far as practicing hard, um, if you see the playing time, usually your practice, practice the best and the hardest as far as like, the, the D line at least. Um, that's probably the direct reflection. I, mean, I wasn't practicing super great early on, and summer I was practicing really great, spring I was practicing good. Um, I kind of had like a little lull, and yeah, that reflected my playing time. And, I kind of got back to practice really hard every day. And that's kind of reflected that. Is that a good way to like avoid complacency, you know, keep you on your toes, keep you pushing? Oh, yeah, and plus with the new staff, they just kind of got to, um, you know, set the standard with the older kids as far as, okay, if he's a junior or senior, he's a returning starter, um, it doesn't mean much. Like, Cheryl's, he's, he was pulled, I was pulled. It doesn't really mean much as far as what you did last year, trying to set the standard like you did. How do you guys adjust defensively <clears throat> when, the, uh, when the offense has a couple series where they stall out? Um, you don't really adjust. You just kind of try to uh, keep your juice going. And um, that's hard sometimes being on the field a lot. Um, even with even how we rotate, it's just hard to keep that energy going for um, four quarters. It's kind of demoralizing. But the most you can do is just keep your spirits up as far as playing hard on defense every snap. So you guys have the, uh, the up-tempo offense? Um, it's a good offense. <laughs> They scored a lot of us in spring ball, and I feel like we're a pretty good defense. Yeah. Facing that every day in, in the spring and in the fall, um, you know, can you explain from a defensive perspective yeah. when it's working, what, what problems that causes? It makes you really tired, for sure. It makes you really, really, really tired. And, um, and there's, like, a lot of weapons. Like, they, they use the tight ends more than um, – than the previous staff for sure. We have big time tight ends, and um, it just makes you really tired when they're going hard tempo. Yeah. I mentioned you didn't think you were practicing well at the beginning of the season. That's why you weren't playing as much. Do you think you realized that at the time, or did it take a while? No, no, no. I definitely didn't realize that. Um, it took me like talking to Coach Will Franklin. Um, I was just like, yo, what do I got to do to play more? Like straight up, I just asked him, what do I got to do to play more? And um, he said, you got to increase your, um, your practice habits. And, Get better practice habits as far as playing hard. Um, Cause I knew I had the, like the top end talent to play well in the games, but I didn't really put two and two together as far as every day in practice. You kind of got to go in just as hard as you are in the game, and it translated well for me to Florida game. I, mean, I had two pretty good. I mean, two weeks of pretty good practice as far as just playing hard. Maybe not being correct all the time and being perfect, but just playing absolutely as hard as I could. And you know, I feel like it showed up. In when did you have that conversation? Um, had that conversation with Will probably, man, before the LSU week, I think. Okay. Um, so maybe three weeks ago now. Yeah. And he told me they kind of just set out something 
goals for me as far as practicing hard every day, maintaining a good attitude, and just putting the team first, things like that. And, uh, yeah. Was there a specific thing you changed about the way you practice? Uh, I just practice harder. Yeah. Um, just, just practice much harder. I mean, took it more serious. Just try to treat it, treat it more like a game instead of just like a practice. Um, and then when the game came around for Florida, like everything I was doing in the game, I was kind of doing that for two weeks straight in practice. It was, it was How long did it take you coming in last year, junior college, and then a coaching change and kind of hectic? I mean, did it? How long did it take you before you really felt like you were settled in here? Everything slowed down. You knew what what was expected day to day. Probably in spring, as far as just what to expect, and then I had to kind of adjust that to the new staff. But um, I don't think I ever really felt comfortable last season. I had some decent games where I showed flashes and stuff like that, but I don't think I ever felt really comfortable just being so far from home and just a high level of competition day in and day out. So probably not until January. Marcel, how much does this coaching staff talk to you guys about bowl eligibility and what's still out there? Um, not not a ton. Um, we just try to win as many games as we can, and hopefully, you know, at the end of the year. Um, we can get to a bowl game. But recently, they've kind of brought it up just so we know, like, not to let the seniors down. And that's always been in the back of my mind since last year. Just how um, how last season ended with like such a talented group that really didn't get bowl eligible just because of various reasons. But um, that's kind of been in the back of my mind all through off season, winter, spring, all that. Is. I mean, deep, deep. I mean, you say that. You know, you haven't really thought about it a whole lot, but do other players on the team think about it? Maybe use that as motivation, or you just you guys. I know the focus. seniors do. Yeah. The seniors want to go to a bowl game. I mean, they went to the Cotton Bowl already, and um, the Citrus Bowl was two pretty good games. I mean, Cotton Bowl's like a BCS game now, so I know they want to get back to something like that. Um, I think they were like soft, the same class. I think were sophomores last time they went to the bowl game. So um, I know they they think about that. And for the underclassmen and the juniors who are going to you know take it over, we just want to build for the future as far as. Let's get on a winning streak if we can. Go to a decent bowl game, bring that in the next season. And then really, for the freshman and sophomore, they could build how they they can leave their mark, how their career, like how they wanted to be at Mizzou early on. So they don't have to wait and scramble and all that kind of stuff. Compared to last year, how much difference is the aftermath of a loss on Saturday, and what's most different? Um, wow, what's most um, compared to last year? Everything was just new for me, so I don't, know. I don't even think I was prepared like some games, really, just mentally. Um, so this year I'm, I'm much more invested, so the losses do hurt much more. And I'm, I'm able to analyze a little better and be more real with myself. Last year I just, oh, they they weren't better than ourselves, but I'm way more realistic with the uh, losses and wins this year. As far as it's really hard to win this conference, you got to be really consistent. So. Do you think that's a team? I mean, from a team perspective, what's most different? Um, I don't know. From a team perspective, man. we're we're still a kind of young team, and um, it's just kind of hard to gauge things like that. But you said in fall camp, I think last year the first four games, you kind of afterwards you kind of stalled out. And it was too tiring. I guess, yeah. Too um, much on your body. Has this been a lot different? Or yeah, I, I really don't. Like my body feels like this is probably the best my body's felt since like, like, my sophomore year in high school. I just feel physically, I feel really good. And I just had a full year of just weight training with the SEC staff and um, all that good stuff. So it just my body feels amazing. I mean, my body fat's down. My weight is actually back up to the same I played at last year, but my body fat is like 9% down. So I think my body can just carry the weight a little bit better and all that good stuff. How easy is it for you personally to turn the page after also Um, it's not easy. Definitely, you watch the film and you end up like, you know, you get re pissed off, and you get angry, and all those emotions kind of come back. When like I see a missed tackle I had that could have been a tackle for loss, or maybe if I got to a quarterback half a second sooner, that would have been a sack fumble, or things like that. So um, you try to learn from that stuff, not dwell on it too much, but learn from it, use it as full fuel. And we use a little bit of that for the LSU, I mean, for the Florida game, looking at the LSU game, like, this won't happen again. Uh, so we just got to prove on it every single week. Speaking of film, um, Coach was saying he showed you the play that Josh made where he chased down that ball and carried yeah. 30 yards away. What did, what, what was kind of the reaction from the team when, when you saw that, that kind of play that yeah, he made just, there? We see, I mean, it's just a lot of freak athletes on the D-line, so we see like freaky plays every day in practice, but that was a pretty freaky play to have in the game. Happen. So, um, it just shows you Josh is like an amazing athlete. And, 
you know, he's going to be in the NFL making a lot of money next year. So. Is that something that maybe the fans and us don't understand how good of an athlete he is? I mean, even for his, for his oh, size. Oh, yeah. Shoot, honestly, pound for pound, Josh Terry and Josh Moore are probably the three best athletes on any side of the, the ball as far as the front the front guys. So they both they all three can dunk, they all three can windmill, they all three can shoot step back three pointers between the legs. So all of those guys are really athletic, like better basketball players than me and Charles out there. Do you guys take some pride when you when you see him score the touch score the touchdown? Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we were like, man, that's a defensive touchdown right there. Uh, that's a defensive guy scoring a touchdown. So we call it a, well D line was calling it a defensive touchdown, but he was on the offensive side of the ball score. We took a lot of pride in that for sure. I haven't talked to you much about the scheme. I mean, for you personally, defensive line and a lot's been talked about the changes. How difficult has it been for you? Um it's just just a learning curve. I mean it's a this is a different scheme, so this is gonna present different things, different benefits, um, different drawbacks. Um, for me, like I wasn't too used to the old team. I was only there one year with the old scheme, so um, it's kind of been, I feel like I kind of have picked up the scheme a little bit better than some other guys just because I didn't have to have it three years with the old scheme and kind of learning all the techniques of the old scheme. Because when I was learning the old scheme, I was like, it was taking me a while to pick that up. And so it was kind of like a fresh start and I kind of started fresh just for everybody else as well. So. Coach Odom talked about how like he told each defensive player to lock arms with the offensive player. Yeah. How uh, how tough is it like when the offense is struggling? You guys you, know, you guys play pretty well. Yeah. Florida, how tough is it to kind of not point the finger? Like, even though you know you're all you're all just teammates, but like how easy is it to, or hard is I guess not to point the fingers of like you guys are kind of the reason we lost. Oh yeah, um, you know definitely that's kind of like a, a high school mentality almost. And I saw a play out on my high school where we had a solid defense. And, uh, if uh, the offense, and sometimes the offense will do good, sometimes do bad. And I just kind of learned lessons from that. Like you can't say anything, any type of um, words, anything can. They could take it the wrong way. Maybe they, maybe we're trying to encourage them. We say it the wrong way. So I try to just sit back and say, you, you know, I trust you guys. I know you guys are get it together. So that's kind of my mindset. I mean, it's hard, obviously. Like, Nobody's just going to watch the game blind and be like, oh, everything's going to be better. But um, you kind of just got to take it in stride and just understand that West Virginia's undefeated. LSU has two losses. Florida has one loss. And Georgia has, I think, one or two losses on last second touchdowns. So it's not like we're just getting killed by chumps. Like, this is the class of the SEC and the only undefeated team in the Big 12 right now besides Baylor that we lost to. So we're not losing to you know, cupcakes and cream pies. So, I mean, I look at it like that. Like, the offense is going against two first round DBs. Those guys are good. They'll probably make the same plays next year in the NFL. LSU's whole front seven potentially could be drafted. Um, so, I know that the teams we're playing are good. It's, it's not like they're just going out there laying an egg against nobody. These are, these are top teams in the SEC. Thanks, man. Yeah.